Hey guys, how you doing? It's Kevin Tech here bringing another video on information technology. Hope you're having a good day. Happy Saturday. And today I want to do Security Plus questions, questions and answers, Security Plus through Exam Compass. And I want to go over some questions. Obviously, if you're new to channel, know what to do. Rate, comment, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. Really appreciate it. So I am just literally getting off a cold and a flu. I had a cold. That cold turned into a flu. Then I had a fever. So my throat is a little jacked up right now. I'm like, my throat is still a little messed up. I'm like getting out of it. But I've been sick. I've been in bed for like five days. I've been haven't been able to do much. But I, today, today or rather this week, I finally feel like myself. So let me share my screen and go over some questions today. It should be fun. It should be quick and easy. Um, some of these questions you may encounter on your exam if you're doing the seven zero one series for series plus. Let me share my screen. All right. Screen, screen three, perfect. All right, uh, let's see what we have here. Two factors that are considered important for creating strong passwords. Obviously is password length and password complexity are the answers I'm gonna select because when you're working in a job, you have to have a strong password, which may, which may, will, be, will be a password length. And the complexity is important because it has to have a special character, uppercase, lowercase, maybe an at symbol. So that's why I selected these two answers. A strong password that meets the password complexity requirements should contain what? Uppercase digits, non-alphabetical characters, lowercase characters, a combination. Of, so I'm going to say the last one on the bottom, it should have a combination of three character groups, which makes sense for me that's just my opinion so i'm going to select that one which of the following passwords the most complex so we have three or actually four different options here i'm going to select the bottom one the bottom one has a capital letter has a number sign on it has a capital l has the number three on it has a lowercase t capital u another another number eight lowercase w, y, and the at symbol. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to select this one as the answer. It seems more complex than all the other ones. So we're going to go with that one. Um, which password policy would be the most effective in decreasing the risk of security breach across multiple accounts? And I'm going to go with uh, password reuse policy. So what that means is you cannot use your same password over and over again, which is why I selected that answer. Which password policy enforces a mandatory password change after a specific time? I'm going to select password password expiration policy. So the password has to be changed after a certain amount of days. So we're going to select that one. The minimum password age policy select, select setting determines the period of time that a password can be used before the system requires user change of true or false. I'm going to pick false for that one. Um... The maximum password age policy setting determines the period of time a password must be used before the user can change it, true or false. I'm going to pick false for that one. Uh, which answer listed below refers to a software tool specifically designed to store and manage login credentials? That would be a password manager, so it'll be like one password or last pass, you know, things like that. that that's the reason why I picked password manager. Which of the following technologies cannot be used as a passwordless authentication method? Cannot be used as a passwordless authentication. So biometrics is physical. Hardware tokens is physical. QR codes come from your mobile device. OTP comes from your mobile device. Um, pass, keys is, pass keys as well. I'm going to select the bottom one. All the above can be used as means for passwordless authentication. Um, replacing password characters in the password field with a series of asterisks is an example of data masking. Which of the answers listed below refers to a type of additional input that increases password complexity and provides better protection against brute force uh, dictionary and rainbow table attacks? I'm going to put salt. Uh, pre pseudo pre pseudo pre pseudo random data added to a password before hashing is referred to as salt. Again, it's going to be salt. Uh, which cryptograph 
which cryptographic technique is used to prevent the effectiveness of rainbow table attacks and cracking hash passwords. I'm going to put salting for that one. And um, key, key stretching is a cryptographic technique that enhances the security of sensitive data, such as cryptographic keys and passwords. It works by repeatedly applying a resource intensive function or algorithm to the input data, thus increasing the contextual effort required for required to derive the original the original key or password, which makes the data more res resistant to brute force dictionary or rainbow table attacks. True or false? I'm not sure that's true for that one. The importance of changing default usernames and passwords could be illustrated by the example of a certain network device such as the router. Which often ship with well, well, with default and well known admin credentials can be looked up on the website. That is true. Um, in most cases, looks like my router that's right over here. They put the password on the side, like they put a sticker right here in the right hand side of it, and it gives you the URL, the password, and everything to log in. In some cases, they have the logging credentials on on these things for some for some weird reason. You know, it's not secure, so it's recommended that you change the password. A technique that allows an attacker to authenticate to a remote server without extracting clear text passwords from a digest is known as what? This is uh, patch the hash. A short list of commonly used passwords tied against a large number of user accounts is a characteristic feature of what? This is going to be a spraying attack. Um. Which password attack bypasses account lockout policy? That's also going to be spraying attack. Um, an attack against encrypted data that relies heavily on computing power to check all possible keys and passwords until the correct one is found is called a brute force attack. What are the measures by 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 one of the measures for bypassing the fill login attempt account lockout policy is to capture any relevant data that may contain the password. And brute force it offline. True or false? This is true. All right. So I got that right. Combination for characters. I got that right. All right. D is the answer for that one. Password reuse policy is that one. Password first. Yeah, because the password, like, if you go to, I know that one because if you go into uh, group policy. Um, administration, is it administration? I think it's administration. So you're just having to go back. So you have password policy. I know you have password policy, and I'm going to make these icons a lot bigger, but it's not going to let me make it bigger. Is it not? All right. So that's fine. Um, so yeah, like that's why I selected that one because I know that we have a password. This is not set up on this policy, but like you could set up the policy for the account lockout thresholds and I'll on and turn it on if I had to. But I know that's that's where you get password expiration as well. You know all the stuff. So this is false. This is false. Remember I talked about password managers like one password. You know, last pass right like things like that. Um, this is all the above, data masking, salt, salt again, salting, true, true, pass the hash, spraying attack, spraying attack, brute force attack, and true. So I got all of them right. I'll stop sharing. Yeah, so if you guys want to see more videos like that, let me know. Uh, I'm just trying to make some Security Plus content on my channel because I haven't ha I haven't done that yet. So if you guys want to see more videos like this, let me know. And I'm I'm gonna try to add more Security Plus content on my channel just so people, in, in case anyone's studying the exam right now, they could just go to, they could just refer to my channel to study. So I'm gonna make a couple more videos like this, and then I'll go back to like technical content again. All right. With that being said, I'll see you guys later. Take care. Have a good weekend. Bye. Bye.